All right, good morning. I'm up here, so you know it's going to be a good Sunday morning. Uh, Brother Ben is in the back uh, getting ready for a baptism. We'll be praying for him because he's going to have to get uh, Jake and Brayden both down and back up. And they're both pretty big boys. So uh, exciting morning this morning. Uh, so glad everybody could be here. If you're a visitor, we definitely want to welcome you. Uh, we do have another trophy up here. Greg, is this, is this your team's trophy? No, not Greg's. Okay. Our middle youth uh, won the championship, coached by Lindsey and Shay. I know a lot of them are up there, but we do want to recognize them. So if you were on the middle youth team or you are one of the uh, coaches, we are, we're going to extend our contract till next year. Uh, would you stand up so you guys can be recognized? Stand, don't be shy. There we go. They're up in the balcony in the back rows. Give them a hand. All right. So I wasn't going to make them come up on the stage. I don't know if they would like that. A um, couple other announcements this Wednesday is business meeting uh, and potluck fellowship meal at 630 in the gym. Copies of the uh, budget and everything are out on the front table. Uh, this Saturday, the youth, they'll be coming to our house for Backyard Movie Projector Night. Uh, they'll be at 6.30. Uh, and if you've got any questions, just let me know. Uh, and then next Sunday, Abby and Nate's uh, wedding shower will be from 2 to 4 uh, in the activities building. And then the following Sunday will be a baby shower for Logan and Sarah Elliott from 2 to 4 also in the um activities building good article on the front as brother ben would always say about scriptural baptism uh be sure to check that out and uh, it's written by brother brother blair so you know it will be good before that let's just go to the lord in a word of prayer i'm going to ask uh, brother al if you'll uh, open us up in prayer We got Jake Buzanis first, and we're thankful for Jake and his family. Been attending our church for a little while, and Jake went down to Florida with us for a youth camp, and uh, we preached and taught the Word of God, and God got to working on all the teenagers' hearts, and you dealt with Jamie that week, I think, that night, and you went out, and, and they're down in Florida. You put your faith and trust in the Lord and asked the Lord to save you. Yes, sir. You know that you've been saved. Yes, sir. And uh, he came down several weeks ago and said, now that I've been saved, I want to be baptized become a member of Farmington Baptist Church. We're thankful for this. Again, thankful for his family, and we're, we're glad to do that this morning. Let's pray, and I'm going to pray, and you pray for Jake as I pray with him. Father, we're thankful for Jake and thankful for this decision. We're so thankful down in Florida. Uh, Lord, he put his faith and trust in you, and he looked to Jesus for salvation. Lord, I pray you'd bless him. Uh, use him, Lord, at the school to be an example for you that, uh, that people might be able to see Jesus in him. Lord, I know you'll do great things through him in the future. Uh, Lord, I pray you'd bless his family that's all here to support him this morning. Be with them. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith, and under the authority of Farmed and Baptist Church, I baptize thee, Jake Buzanis. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. All God's people say it. All right. Amen. We're proud of this young man here, uh, Braden Smith. Y'all pray for me this morning, and uh, we'll be all right, though. Uh, we'll be all right. But uh, we're thankful for Braden, and I got to talk to Braden the other day, uh, on a Wednesday a week ago, and uh, uh, he uh, he come to me, and I talked with him and his mom and dad, and they're at home. You don't have to be at church to be saved. They're at home. You put your faith and trust in the Lord, and you know that you've been saved. You know you've been born again. Yes, sir. 
Amen. And he come down last Sunday, said, I've been saved. Uh, now that I know I'm saved, I want to live for the Lord. He was telling me that and said, I, I want to be baptized, become a member of the church. We're so thankful for him and his family. You pray with me as I pray uh, that God bless uh, Brother Braden. Father, we're thankful for Braden. And Lord, thankful for his heart. He loves you. And Lord, I pray you'd use him, uh, Lord, at the school, that again, uh, people be able to see Jesus in him. He puts you first. And Lord, uh, you've got a plan for both these young men. And I, I pray you'd reveal that to them. And they would follow you all the days of their life. Bless them. Bless Braden. Bless his family that's here to support him. And be with him, Lord. Bless this baptism. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith, and under the authority of Farmington Baptist Church, I baptize thee, Braden Smith, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. All right, good great, brother. Amen. All God's people see it. Amen. Amen. Always a great way to start our worship service out. We're thankful you're here. Brother Greg, you uh, come and, and lead us in worship, if you will, this morning, brother. All right, it's been a good been a good service already, hasn't it? Uh, I'll give the everybody a chance to to get uh, get settled, and then I'll have you stand up. We'll we'll sing uh, uh, four straight songs, okay? We'll have a prayer in uh, in between uh, after the for after the second song. All right, if you would go ahead, and let's stand up, stand up, and join us. And we're going to start with uh, "Great is the Lord." Take time to shake hands, make everybody feel welcome this morning.
blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, vision so raptured, a burst in my sight. Angels descending, break from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior in that being blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Brother Charles Nelson, uh, good to have you here. Would you lead us in prayer, please? Amen. All right, let's continue on with a song called He is Jehovah. He is Jehovah, God of creation. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty, the balm of Gilead, the rock of ages. He is Jehovah, the God that healeth thee. Sing alleluia, sing alleluia, sing alleluia. Sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. He is Jehovah, the God that healeth thee. He's your provider, Jehovah Jireh, God of salvation, God of Son, he said to you, he testified of him. He is Jehovah, the God that healeth thee. Sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia, sing Alleluia. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. He is Jehovah, the God that healeth thee. Amen. 
amen. All right, uh, uh, continue on now with uh, one of Mark's favorites. Where is Mark? Mark Crawford. He must be out on security. All right, uh, 10,000 reasons. It's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord. Oh, oh, my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. Your rich in love and Your soul. reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Holy name, sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. I will worship your holy name, Lord. I worship your holy name. You can be seated. Uh, we appreciate each of you being here in the Lord's house. We're going to be in the Gospel of John. There in the New Testament, fourth book in the New Testament, the Gospel of John, chapter number 11. John chapter 11, verse 28 and verse number 29. John 11, verse 28 and 29. Simple message. I don't want you to get confused uh, this morning. Uh, you know, it's easy to get confused. I noticed uh, yesterday the U.S. Uh, basketball team uh, won the gold in the Olympics. And I was reminded, you know, somebody went up to Larry Bird uh, and asked him, said, uh, said, Larry, you were on that great dream team, the 1992 dream team that won the gold. First time the pros got to play in the Olympics. Said, how do you think the 92 team would do against this team? They just won the gold. And Larry Bird said, I, I don't know. I mean, they're a tough team. Uh, I think we'd win, but it'd probably be pretty close. And he said, yeah, you, you really think it'd be close, but y'all'd win. And 
Larry said, yeah, it'd be close, but I think we'd win. He said, you know, we're all up in our 60s now. <laughs> well, he was a little confused, although I, I do love the 92 team the best. But, uh, you know, I don't want you to get confused this morning. We're going to look at John 11. And I want to think today about this thought, the call of God. The call of God. John 11, there's a great little phrase God put for us right in the middle of these verses. John 11, verse 28. Jesus and, and Mary and Martha. In John 11, verse 28, the Bible says, And when she had so said, she went her way. And it's about uh, Martha. And she called Mary, her sister, secretly saying, and look at this last sentence in verse 28. I'd underline in your Bibles. Saying, the master is come. And calleth for thee. I love those last three words. He calleth for thee. And the Bible says of Mary in verse 29, As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. She came straight to Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for the two baptisms we had. Everything going smoothly. Oh, Lord, we praise you for your goodness, how you've worked in our young people's lives this past month. And I pray you'd work today. Speak to each and every one. Lord, we claim that promise that your word won't return void. I pray that it would speak to our hearts today. Bless this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The call of God. Now the story of John 11 is just a, a, an interesting story. You've got uh, the, the, this family that Jesus was really close to. Three siblings. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. They lived in a town called Bethany. And Lazarus, the brother, has died. And, and when Jesus is heading to Bethany to see him, he's coming to the funeral service. And you know, if you know the rest of the story, he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. But Jesus is on his way to, to the service and Martha comes out out of the house, out of the town, to, uh, out of the home to meet Jesus. But Mary stays behind. And, and we find as Jesus is talking to, to Martha, he begins to call. And I don't know if he, what he did, but he calls for Mary. And the Bible gives us this great little statement, the Master has come, he calleth for thee. Over and over the Bible uses those words to speak, uh, to describe us as Christians. God calls us. God calls everyone. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9, He has saved us and called us with a holy calling. God calls. He's calling you this morning. We sing there's a reason. All of these invitation hymns, it seems like most of them use that terminology call. We sing sometimes, Jesus is tenderly calling. Calling thee home. Calling today. Calling today. God calls and He calls. And I want you to think about that this morning. I want you to ask, has God called you in the past? God calls us individually. He doesn't call us all as a, a corporate group. He speaks to us one-on-one. -on -one. Has God called you? Is God calling you this morning? Let's think about that. If you're taking notes, I'm going to give you three R's. I want you to see the route God uses. The method God uses to call people is what we mean by that. The route God uses, the way He calls people. The route, I want you to see the reason God calls. He calls for a couple of different reasons. The reason God calls, and then I want you to ask, what will our response be to the call of God? The route, uh, the reasons, and our response, the three R's this morning. Let's think about it. You notice the route this morning. You, we're not sure how uh, Jesus called Mary. It just says in verse 28, the master has come and calleth for thee. I, I don't know if Jesus called out, Mary, where are, you, where are you at with the loud voice? I don't know if he sent Mary or sent Martha, the sister, go get uh, your sister. I want to talk to her. But some way, somehow, God called out uh, to Mary. The master has come and he calleth for you. I want you to know the route. God calls, and I want you to catch this. This morning, God calls. He calls me. He calls you. Every one of us. And He calls us in two different ways. He doesn't pick up the phone and call us. He doesn't send us a letter in the mail or an email on the computer or a text over the phone. How does God call us today? He calls two different ways. I want you to see, number one, the routes God uses. He calls through the scriptures. He calls through the Bible. If you want to write in the margin, I'd write this one. Psalms 103 and verse 20. The Bible says they hearkening unto the voice of His 
Word. Hearkening unto the voice of His Word. When the Word is preached, there's something about this Bible. There's something about the Scriptures. When the Bible is preached, God speaks to us through the Scriptures. He calls out to us. Whenever a preacher, doesn't matter where he's at, at what he's doing, but when a preacher preaches or teaches the Word of God, because it's God's words, not man's words. When a preacher preaches the Word of God, the Spirit calls out to us. Do you remember there on the the road to Emmaus? uh, The Bible says there was a couple of disciples and they were walking with Jesus. And Jesus is talking to them. And it says He opened the Scriptures. He's talking to them about the Word of God. And it says there in the last chapter of Luke, after Jesus is gone, these two men looked at each other and they said, Our hearts burned within us as He opened to us the Scriptures. There's something about the Bible that separates this book from any other book that's ever been written. Whenever the Bible is preached, whenever it's taught, whenever it's memorized, whenever it's read, it speaks to us. God calls. He's calling you, some of you this morning. He calls through the Word of God. When the Bible is preached, our hearts burn within us. God calls through the Bible. The other route... God calls in two ways. This is the method. Again, not a, he, he's not, not going to knock you down with a bolt of lightning. God calls through the Bible and God calls through the Spirit. Write these down. The first one was Psalms 103 verse 20. And the second one is 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 12. 1 Kings 19 and verse 12 talks about, and you've heard this terminology before, it talks about a still, small voice. God calls to us through a still small voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit. How's God get our attention? Now what's great about in that chapter, you've got the prophet Elijah and and God is speaking to Elijah and the Bible says there's a great earthquake. The ground begins to shake as God sends this mighty earthquake. But the Bible says God wasn't in the earthquake. And then there's some fire. And I don't know if fire falls from heaven or it springs up off the ground. But there's a big fire there, divine fire. But the Bible says God wasn't in the fire. But then it says there in 1 Kings, God was in the still, small voice. You see, some of you are waiting on God to write your name in the sky. You're writing on God. Brother Ben, I'm going to get saved when God gives me some great big sign. God's already given you a sign. He's given you the Word of God when it's preached burns in your heart and He's given the Holy Spirit that will speak to your heart. Remember on the day of Pentecost Peter got up and preached and he preached the gospel and 3,000 people got saved and you remember what it says there in Acts chapter 2? They were pricked. We're at in their heart. That's what the Holy Spirit does. I remember when it happened to me. I was sitting in church and there came a lot of times where I didn't pay attention. I didn't care what the Holy Spirit had to say or didn't care what the preacher had to say. But all of a sudden, God met me where I was at. And God began to speak to me through the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. He pricked my heart and I began to realize, hey, I'm lost. I've never been saved. You haven't always been a Christian. You're not a Christian because your mom and daddy's a Christian. You're not a Christian because your grandparents are a Christian. God deals with us one-on-one. And God began to prick my heart. And I began to realize there in my heart that I needed to be saved. That's how God calls. Again, He's not in the earthquake. He's not in the fire. He's not going to send you some sign and knock you down with a bolt of heaven. God is going to call you to salvation through the Holy Spirit and through the Word of God. Again, there's a reason some of these great hymns of faith And I love all the different songs we sing. Some of the reasons old hymns have stood the test of time. We'll sing sometimes, and it's so true. Softly and tenderly. What's it say? Jesus is calling. That's how Jesus calls, right? The still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. The devil will try to distract you. The devil will lie to you. The devil will try to get you to put it off. But God calls. Remember, this is how God calls you. This is how God calls me. He calls through the Word and He calls through the Spirit. That's the two ways God works. Is He calling you this morning? That's the route God uses. All right, Brother Ben, God's going to speak to me. He's not going to knock me down. He's not going to get my attention with the earthquake or with the fire. God's going to speak to me through the Word and the Spirit. What's the reasons God calls? Why does God call us? What is God calling us to? What's the reason? Well, there's a couple of different of these. Number one, I would tell you, and you think about the text, God was calling Mary to comfort her. God was calling Mary again, Lazarus had died. 
to give uh, the sister of Lazarus comfort and also to, to show he was going to raise Lazarus, her brother, from the dead. Jesus had a reason for calling Mary. God has a reason for calling us. God calls us, number one, he calls the lost to salvation. Listen to Matthew chapter 9 and verse 13. Jesus said, I am not come to call. It's all through the Bible, folks. Jesus said, I'm not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus said, here's why I've come, and here's how, why the number one reason I call people. I call the lost to be saved. I call sinners to repent of their sins and put their faith and trust in Jesus. You can read, there's an account there in Mark where uh, one of the blind men gets saved and he's healed of his sight and he gets saved as well. And the Bible says in that, that verse in Mark, uh, the, it says, Jesus calleth thee. It's almost the same words as right here. Jesus called out to that blind man, I'll save you, I'll heal you. And that blind man responded in faith. God calls sinners to be saved. Do you remember when God called you? Do you remember when God came to where you were at and He called you through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God? He called you to be saved. You came to realize you needed to be saved. You came to realize you were lost and He called you uh, to be saved. Listen, God calls us at different ages. In, in 1 Samuel, Samuel was a child. Now, I don't know exactly how old he was, but Samuel was a young person. When God called him, a bunch of our young people got saved there in youth camp. Many others got saved in previous youth camps. That's the best testimony. Jesus said, suffer the little children and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. God calls people when they're young. But hey, Nebuchadnezzar got saved in the book of Daniel when he was old. Right after he got saved, he dies. Uh, King Manasseh uh, got saved when he was an older man. Right after he got saved, he died. God can save people. God calls people at all different ages. If you're young and you're lost, God may be calling you this morning. How do I know? That still small voice of the Holy Spirit. The Word of God burns in our heart. God may be calling some of you that are young to be saved. God may be calling some of you that are middle-aged to be saved. God may be calling some of you that are older to be saved. God calls at all different ages. Hey, God calls at different places. Now He calls people at church. Many of you got saved in a church service. But, but think about it. God calls at different times and places. The jailer got saved at midnight. Not at 11 o'clock or right before noon, but he got saved at midnight. You can get saved any hour of the day when God is calling. Uh, Samuel was in bed at night. People, I've talked to people who got up out of bed and God was drawing them, God was convicting them and they got out of bed and fell down beside their bed there and cried out to Jesus and got saved. God calls at different places, different locations. Zacchaeus, God called him when he was up a sycamore tree and he got saved. The thief got saved on the cross. Uh, the, the Ethiopian eunuch was in his vehicle, in his chariot and he got saved. God calls us at different times, different places, different ages. But God calls. God calls. Oh, John Newton, the man who wrote the most famous hymn that ever has been wrote, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, now I can see. John Newton was in a boat. He was off the coast of Ireland and a great storm came out. He was there in the ocean and he thought the boat was going to sink and he had a Christian mother who prayed for him when he was a boy and read to him the Bible and he remembered his mother's prayers. He remembered his mother's scripture readings and in that boat he thought it was going to sink. In the middle of that boat in the ocean, John Newton cries out to God as God began to call him and John Newton got saved in a storm in the bottom of the boat in the ocean. I'm going to tell you, God calls at different times and different locations. God's calling some of you this morning. Some of you that are lost, you've never been saved. God is calling you. You say, preacher, how do I know? That still small voice. You know. Now, Brother Ben don't know. Maybe your mom and dad don't know. Maybe the person sitting beside you don't know. But you know. The scripture begins to burn in our heart. Remember those on the Emmaus Road? Our hearts burned as he opened to us the scriptures. You feel that burn in your heart. And you feel that still, small voice saying, God's talking to you. You need to be saved today. God calls. He calls to salvation. He's calling some of you to be saved today. But also, besides salvation, God calls the saved. 
Some of you here, you say, Preacher, I remember when God called me to be saved. I remember when I got born again. I remember it was at home, it was a Bible school, it was a revival, uh, it was at work, it was in the field. But Brother Ben, God called me and I put my faith and trust in Jesus. Yes, but you're saved. God may be still calling you today. God calls the saved. What are you talking about? Well, in the book of Exodus, chapter 3 and verse 4, the Bible says God called unto Moses. Lead my people out of Egypt. In Acts 13 and verse 2, uh, the Bible said about Paul and Barnabas, Separate me, uh, Saul and Barnabas, for the work whereunto I have called them. It's all over the Bible. Some of you that are saved, you know that you're born again, you've been saved, you remember when it happened to you. God's calling you to something in your Christian life. God's calling you to something in ministry. Some of you that are here, and you've never been scripturally baptized. God is calling you. You've been saved. God called you to be saved. Uh, but you need to join this church. And some of you have never been scripturally baptized. Some of you, uh, some of the young people have never been baptized at all. And I know that's tough. And the devil will whisper in your ear, what's people going to think? Everybody that's saved will rejoice. If somebody doesn't rejoice, we'll have Brother West talk to them, right? Everybody will rejoice, I promise. Everybody will be tickled to death. Uh, man, God calls and you feel you've been saved. You feel that voice in, in, inside. God's calling you. I need to be baptized. Maybe you've been saved. You've been scripturally baptized in your memberships at another church. And man, you're coming here. You're serving here. You're, you're here in this church. And you need to make that official. Become a part of the church. God calls. You feel that still, small voice in your heart. God may be calling some of you to do something. Everybody in the church has a place in the church. There's something, we don't all do the same thing. So many people serve in so many ways. And you may not even be aware of it, but we got so many people who do different things. And I could mention, and I leave so many people out, but so many do something. There's something God wants every one of us to do. Again, it may not be to preach, maybe to teach a class, maybe to sing in the choir or the praise team or play an instrument, maybe to uh, help out with the nursery or help out with children's church. Maybe to help out on Tuesday. Maybe to drive the bus. There's so many things. We can mention a hundred more easily. But God calls us. Brother Ben, how do I know what God is calling me to? God lays that burden on your heart. God brings something to your mind. And remember the route. How does God speak? He's not going to write your name in the sky. He's not going to knock you down with a bolt of lightning. God speaks through the Word and the Spirit. What's God calling you to this morning? The Bible says, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. If you got ears to hear, listen, God speaks quietly, softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. Is he calling you to be saved? Is he calling you to something else as a Christian, to be baptized, to join the church, to serve him some way, to make a commitment to him, to leave something behind and go forward for Jesus? God's calling. But the last one, the response. Don't you love, God put this in there for a reason. Don't you love verse 29? The Bible says of this Mary, it says as soon, this is not Mary the mother of Jesus, it's another Mary. The Bible says as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. She came unto Jesus. What a response. How will you respond? The Bible says as many as received him, as many as received Jesus, to him gave he the power, the authority, to become the sons of God. You've got to say yes to Jesus. I'm going to tell you, Dad sometimes would call me to something. Ben, I need your help. And I could run away, right? I could go hide in the woods or something. I'd get in trouble. But I had to answer, right? When, when your mom or dad calls you, you've got, to, you've got to respond. It's the same way with Jesus. If he's calling you, you've got to say yes to Jesus. If he's calling you to salvation... Say, yes, Lord, I want to be saved. God calls. Uh, so, and here's the thing. Nobody else can respond for you. You remember that story of Sam, Samuel and Eli. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 2 or 3. And, and Samuel's a child. God calls him at night. And he goes to the man he's staying with, the, the priest, Eli. And he says, God's calling me. Will, will you talk to God? And Eli says, I can't answer for you you got to do it. And that's the thing. If God is calling you, listen, I, sometimes I can look out and I can see people are under conviction. And I want to go out there and say, listen, I, I'll do it for you. But I can't do it for you. 
God deals with this one on one. If God's speaking to you, you've got to answer. Your spouse can't do it for you. Your kids can't do it for you. Your friends can't do it for you. Your parents can't do it for you. You've got to do it. Now here's the thing. God calls repeatedly. You'll notice there in the Bible it says he calleth, E-T-H in the King James. He calleth, he calls continually. Jesus didn't just call Mary one time. He called several times. And Jesus calls repeatedly. And if some of you God's been dealing with you for weeks, some of you God's been dealing with you for months, God, some of you God may be dealing with you for years. God calls repeatedly. But the book of Genesis, God said, my spirit won't, ever, won't always strive with men. There may come a time, this is why the Bible says, today's the day of salvation. God's spirit may not always strive with men. God may not always be calling you. If God is calling you today, man, respond today. Lord, I want to be saved. Lord, whatever you're calling me to do, uh, Lord, if you're calling me to preach, if you're calling me to teach, if you're calling me to help, if you're calling me to do this or that, I want to do it. Answer the call of God. You got to say yes. You know, years ago, there was a, a boy in about 20 years old in Paducah by the name of Vernon. And Vernon, he went to a different church, but, but there about 1922 or so, the First Baptist Church of Paducah had a tent revival. And they would have tent revivals because they could fit more people in the tent they could in their sanctuary. They had a great big tent they set up there and they had an evangelist come in. A whole lot of people got saved and Brother Vernon, he was about 20 years old or so, and somebody invited him to go to that tent revival, and he went. The preacher preached the word of God. God began to call, and that night, Brother Vernon put his faith and trust in Jesus. Got saved, joined First Baptist Church, B.D. Clapp. Old Brother Clapp was the pastor. God began to call later on as he was there, and he surrendered to preach, announced God was calling him to be a pastor. He got ordained. He went out and began to pastor some churches. 1940, right up the road here, Coldwater Baptist Church called him. Brother V.A. Turner. I've, I've mentioned him a time or two in the past. Brother Vernon Turner, V.A. Turner. And he went up here to Coldwater. And back then in 1940, 41, the church was half time. They had services on the first and the third Sunday. That's all. And Brother Turner, he's preaching the word of God out there. God had called him. He remembered that. He's preaching. Matter of fact, he befriended a young man who God had been dealing with to preach that was a member here at Farmington, Brother Stephen Cobb. He would go over to where Miss Lisa lives at now, the old Cobb home place, and he'd pray with young Cobb. And matter of fact, when he left Coldwater, the very next man they called his first church was Brother Stephen Cobb. And Brother Turner, he preached the word of God. He challenged people, if God is calling you, say yes to Jesus. And God was calling Brother Stephen Cobb to be a pastor. He pastored all through Kentucky and up in Missouri, up in Indiana. And Brother Turner, he mentored Brother Cobb while he was there at Coldwater. But that was the first and third Sunday. And I love how these stories, they tie together. So Brother Turner was at Coldwater on the first and third Sunday. What about the second and fourth? We needed another church. And lo and behold, down in Hickman County, there was a little church off the beaten path in Hickman County, the Pleasant Valley Baptist Church, Highway 303. And Brother Turner, on the first Sunday, preached up here at Coldwater, second Sunday, 1940 41, preached down there, back and forth. And he's preaching there at Pleasant Valley Baptist Church. And there's a young 13, 14 year old boy. As Brother Turner's preaching, God speaks. Remember, how does God call? Through the Word and through the Spirit. There was a young boy who lived on a farm, had a hard, rough life, right down the road from the church by the name of James. And Brother Cobb, Brother, uh, excuse me, Brother Turner was preaching. And I don't know if it was under Brother Turner's preaching or the man that followed. But Brother Turner, if he didn't get saved under his preaching, he at least laid the groundwork. And Brother James, who was Brother Paul right here's daddy, James Nicholas, Brother Paul was telling me this the other day, put his faith and trust in Jesus. God calls. That's the way God has worked down through the ages. God calls through the Word and through the Spirit. And we've got to respond. So the question this morning, is God calling you? Now you've got to respond. God called a king one time by the name of Agrippa. And God was calling him and Agrippa looks at Paul and he says, Paul, almost... Almost you persuadest me to become a Christian. He didn't have the right response. 
He said, I'll do it later. And the devil will lie to you. The devil will try to get you to put it off. We're going to have a hymn of invitation in just a moment. And if God is calling you to salvation, man, say yes to Jesus. I've told you, if you want to be saved, you can be. Jesus said, if you're thirsty, come. Whosoever cometh to me, Jesus said, I'll in no wise turn away. If you'll come to Jesus, he won't turn you away. If you want to be saved, you can be today. God's calling. You feel it in your heart. You can be saved. Man, say yes to Jesus. God's calling somebody that's been saved. You need to be baptized. God's told you to. Brother Ben didn't tell you to. God told you to in his book. Man, answer the call. If you need to join this church, God's calling. Do that. If you need to make a commitment to the Lord, God, I want to get more involved just there in your pew. Lord, I, I'm going to start serving in this ministry. I'm going to get involved here. I'm going to use my talents, my gifts, my abilities to be a blessing to others. God calls. How will you respond? to the call of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word. We're thankful that down through the ages you've called people. You call sinners to salvation. You call Christians to service. And Lord, you're calling today and I pray that we would answer the call. Lord, I pray especially for that one. Lord, it's probably more than one that's here today that need to be saved. I pray they'd say yes to Jesus. They'd say, I want to be saved. Lord, they can cry out to Jesus and be saved. Lord, I pray they'd do that. They'd say yes to the Lord. Bless this invitation. Others who need to make decisions, Lord, you help them to do that. We ask you to bless. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing, Brother Greg.